Thank you for starting your week with us. Hello and welcome to Business Daily. I'm Ijeon in Seoul. Let's get started with a look at today's highlights. A highly contagious strain of bird flu has been discovered at a poultry farm here in Korea, and the government has imposed a 48-hour nationwide ban on the movement of poultry, farm workers, and vehicles. The share of U.S. beef in Korea's imported beef market has topped 50 percent for the first time since 2003, thanks to the Korea USFTA. We have these stories and more coming right up. We start with the latest on the avian influenza detected at a farm in the southwest of the country. The Agriculture Ministry has confirmed that the virus is highly pathogenic and has ordered all 12,000 ducks on the farm to be culled. With a 48-hour countrywide movement ban on poultry in place now, Korea's Prime Minister ordered relevant authorities to prevent it from spreading further. Our Lee ji has more. The Korean government has confirmed that a suspected bird flu case was found to be highly pathogenic. The Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs said Sunday that the avian influenza discovered a day earlier on a duck farm in Gochang, Jeollabukdo province, some 300 kilometers southwest of Seoul, tested positive as a highly pathogenic strain of H5N6, which is known to have a 100 percent mortality rate on chickens. Some 12,000 birds on the farm have been slaughtered. While no other poultry farms are within 500 meters of the infected farm, the ministry issued a 48-hour standstill on all poultry farms with the measures to remain in effect for seven days in Kuchang and nearby areas. The ministry will also carry out disinfection on all poultry and livestock farms nationwide, as well as expanding control stations on major roads. The avian influenza alert status was also raised to the highest level in order to stop the virus from spreading further. On Monday, Prime Minister Lee nak directed related government ministries and provincial governments to do everything they can to stop a possible outbreak. Initial actions and careful site management are critical in preventing a further outbreak. Those first actions must be bold and quick, even if it seems too much, and a thorough preventive system must be maintained until the situation is completely under control. The Prime Minister also ordered an epidemiological investigation to find the source of the infection on top of expanding disinfection facilities nationwide. This is Korea's first bird flu case in five months since the government confirmed the previous outbreak in July. Lee ji Business Daily. Korea's producer prices, a barometer of consumer inflation, continued its upward trend for the fourth consecutive month. According to the Bank of Korea's on Monday, the country's producer price index for October rose to 103.01, the highest since December of 2014. The figure represents an increase of 3.5 percent on year. Prices of agricultural goods tumbled almost 14 percent a month, the largest on-month drop since the central bank started tracking the data in 1965. Livestock prices also fell 8.4 percent a month in October. However, the falls were offset by rising prices of oil products and manufactured goods on the back of global, rising global oil prices, supporting the overall gain in October's producer price index. Helped by its relatively low price and high quality, American beef now accounts for half of Korea's total beef imports. It's the highest market share seen in almost 15 years. But will the upcoming amendment of the Korea USFTA hold back the rise? Our Kim Hae-sung tells us more. U.S. beef now accounts for more than half of Korea's imported beef market for the first time since 2003. The Korea International Trade Association says the country bought around 990 million U.S. dollars worth of U.S. beef in the first 10 months this year, taking 50.7 percent of Korea's imported beef market. The figure had been above the 50 percent level from the early 1990s, hitting almost 76 percent in 2003. But it was pushed down when Korea started banning imports of U.S. beef due to the mad cow disease outbreak in 2003. 
The share of U.S. beef in the Korean market slumped to less than 18% in 2004. But after a series of negotiations between 2006 and 2008, Korea resumed U.S. beef imports in 2008. Since the Korea-U.S. free trade agreement took effect in 2012, the share of U.S. beef has steadily increased thanks to lower custom tariffs. This year, U.S. beef also surpassed Australian beef imports, retaking its number one spot in Korea. Kim hye Business Daily. Korea's export growth is continuing its recovery momentum, far pacing that of its global peers. While global exports have risen a little over 9% on year during the first nine months of 2017, Korea has posted double-digit growth over the same period. Our Won jung Hwan reports. According to the data released by the World Trade Organization on Sunday, South Korea's exports grew at the fastest pace out of the world's top 10 exporting countries over the first nine months of the year. Thanks to an upturn in global demand, Korea's exports grew by 18.5 percent on year to record 430 billion U.S. dollars of exports from January to September 2017, outpacing both the United States and China, the top two countries in terms of total exports. September was a particularly good month, with Korea's exports growing by 35 percent from the months before, outpacing the Netherlands, which had the second fastest growth rate by over 20 percent. Korea's strong growth rates for September, which was more than three times the global average, helped the country regain sixth place in the overall export rankings after it fell two spots in the previous year. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy attributed South Korea's strong performance to the economic recovery in advanced and developing countries and rising demand for information technology products like semiconductors. However, it also laid out concerns that trade protectionism and uncertainty surrounding oil prices could adversely affect South Korea's exports in the remaining months of this year. Won jung -an, Business Daily. Japan's exports held steady in October, with analysts expecting global demand for electronics and automobiles to drive the nation's steady economic recovery. Monday's data from the Ministry of Finance showed outbound shipments rose 14 percent on year, led by shipments to China and Australia in particular. Export volume also rose 3.8 percent last month compared to a year earlier, following September's 4.8 percent gain. This fell slightly short of the 15.8% growth estimate by Reuters, but still represents healthy rebound following a 14.1% gain in September. Japan's trade surplus in October was tallied at $2.53 billion, rising for the fifth consecutive month. Let's now get a quick check on how the markets fared here in Seoul on this Monday. For that, we connect our Uniskim on the line. So, Eunice, how do Korea's major bourses do on the first trading day of the week? Well, June, both the Cosby and the Cosdex started up on an upswing, but within the first couple hours, the main bourse saw red on the back of aggressive institutional selling. Following an afternoon of treading water, the benchmark Cosby at the closing bell shed a quarter percent to end at 2527.67. The tech-heavy Kosdaq regained its upward momentum after Friday's brief step back, up 1.22% to a fresh record of 785.32. The Korean won, flirting with the 1,100 mark all day, wrapped at 1,100.61 to the greenback and market close. Now, overseas investors were the major push behind the gains on both bourses once again today. This as bearishness ruled Wall Street Friday, with all three major indices wrapping the week down amid investor uncertainty over the U.S. tax reform bill currently making its way through Congress. The Dow Jones and the S&P 500 marked a two-week losing streak, their first since August. All right, then. What do we have to look forward to in the week ahead? Well, we will get a peek into the FOMC minutes from its November meeting Wednesday and also the ECB's minutes on Thursday. But it's retail sales folks will be watching with a couple of America's biggest shopping days ahead. The so-called Black Friday on Friday, one day after Thanksgiving, and Cyber Monday a few days after that. Both prime times to pick up deals for Christmas. Can you believe it? Now just a month away. 
The National Retail Federation estimates about 70% of Americans, that's about 164 million people, are considering shopping this coming weekend. But how successful the weekend will be remains to be seen, especially given the fact that many retailers do start their sales and markdowns earlier, especially online. This has been Eunice Kim for Business Daily. The rise of Bitcoin is showing no signs of slowing down. The price is hitting a new record high of over $8,000. The virtual currency rose 4.8% to $8,071.05 and is now up over 700% this year. The cryptocurrency has now shaken off multiple drops of over 25% this year, having also plunged earlier this month. The recent volatility has been mostly due to technological forks, but it has regained momentum thanks to lower transaction costs and faster speeds. With the rise, Wall Street investors are starting to look at the currency more seriously, with CME Group set to offer Bitcoin futures trading starting next month. The Samsung family is number two on Forbes' list of Asia's richest families this year. Losing the top spot, it's held for two years to the Indian Ambani family. Forbes conducted its research based on three generations of the families running Asia's biggest companies. The results showed the Ambani's owners of Reliance Group was the richest family on the continent, with total assets nearing 45 billion U.S. dollars. The E family, which owns Samsung Group, came in as second with total assets of around $40 billion. Other Korean families in the top 50 are Hyundai's Jung family, the Gu family of LG, and the Che family of SK. Two aftershocks above magnitude 3 rattled the southeastern city of Pohang yet again this morning, following a rare earthquake that hit the region last Wednesday. A total of 58 aftershocks have now been reported, with over 5,500 buildings damaged and 1,100 people being forced out of their homes. The land ministry said it has secured some 160 rental properties run by the state-run Korea Land and Housing Corporation to accommodate the homeless. Those selected will be exempt from security deposits, while monthly rent will be cut by half, with the ministry promising to secure even more homes for those affected. Victims will be able to live in the properties for up to six months, but may extend their stay if necessary. And following last week's rare earthquake, the Korean government decided to delay the country's college entrance exam, or Sunung, by one week. With discount events already planned, Businesses have also had to quickly adjust and come up with new dates and details for their sales plan. Our Elliot Kim has more. Every year following the completion of college entrance exams, various businesses from restaurants to retailers offer special discount events for the high school students who have just passed a significant milestone in their lives. Since November tends to be a slow month for retailers, the entrance exam sales have been a welcome addition. But with the exam being abruptly delayed following last week's earthquake, businesses now have to quickly adjust their sales events. Some changes have been easy. Lotte, Shinsege, and Hyundai department stores have simply delayed sales events for those holding test identification slips by one week. But other changes aren't as simple. The retailers said they are still discussing whether other events like makeup shows, fashion lectures, and concerts can be rescheduled. The change has also left the travel and entertainment industries with their hands tied. Luckily for test takers and their families, many tour operators and travel companies are offering free itinerary changes and cancellations for the students and their immediate families. The earthquake and the test delay were basically unavoidable, so offering free changes and cancellations to those affected is the right thing to do. Concerts and musicals that have pre-sold discount tickets are being postponed if possible or refunded as a last resort. The Ministry of Education postponed the exam just 12 hours ahead of its scheduled start following Wednesday's quake. Elliot Kim, Business Daily. Vietnam is increasingly emerging as an attractive market for Korea with its young population and high growth rate. 
And our Lee Joo-young takes us to a Hallyu Expo that was recently held in Ho Chi Minh City. An expo for Korean cultural content and products was held in Vietnam's largest city of Ho Chi Minh as part of efforts to tap into the nascent market. At this cosmetic section, swarms of Vietnamese women are getting their so-called Korean-style makeup done, which became popular from dramas. I came because I wanted to check out the famous makeup brands used by actors Song Hye Kyo and Lee Min Ho. Hosted by the Ministry of Culture, Sports and Tourism and the Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, some 100 Korean companies in the fields of beauty, cultural content and fashion showcase their products. Roughly 35 content firms had one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions with local buyers to seek ways to cooperate in broadcasting, animation and characters. For us Vietnamese game developers, we think Korean games have good design and characters, so we came to see if we can collaborate. The communist country has long been an attractive market for Korea with an average annual growth rate of over 6% over the past decade. It's also a very young country in that the average age of the population is under 30. We want this Hallyu Expo to act as a platform for small businesses to expand overseas. With both the government and COTRA set to expand support for SMEs seeking to enter the Vietnamese market, Korea's influence in Vietnam is continuing to broaden. Lee Joo-young, Business Daily. Roses are one of the most popular flowers in the world, but rose imports also bring with them the burden of royalty payments. However, Korean bread roses have turned Seoul from a royalty payer to a royalty exporter. Our Lee jong yeon has the story. These colorful roses were not bred using imported seeds. They were developed by Korea's Rural Development Administration. Now the flowers are yielding export royalties. To be exported worldwide, roses must be bred to have thick stems and last as long as cut flowers. After a decade of cultivation, Korea's royalty payments for roses have been reduced from nearly 7 million U.S. dollars to about 2.5 million dollars. Since the domestic rose cutting costs 90 cents and foreign cuttings cost more than twice as much, the penetration rate of local breeds has jumped to 30 percent. The most popular varieties at home and abroad include the thornless deep purple, ice wing, pink beauty and sunshine. The Rural Development Administration plans to push for further development of roses to expand exports and bring the localization ratio up to 40 percent in the near future. Lee jong -yun, Business Daily. And that wraps it up for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with more at the same time, same place for your business daily. Until then, goodbye.